There's something going on in Santa Clara right now. Or is it there's something that's not going on? Do we have a little bit of a mystery with what's going on with Christian McCaffrey? He's not at voluntary um, practice. Haven't seen him at OTAs. Has not been to organized team activities, even though they're voluntary. And when Kyle Shanahan was asked about uh, McCaffrey and Ayuk and Jennings, who weren't there, he just kind of mumbled something about, yeah, it's just not here. It's optional. It's what you deal with. No biggie. But then uh, I saw a quote from uh, Bobby Turner, the 49ers running back coach. And he was asked about McCaffrey, and he said, yeah, McCaffrey's not here physically, but you know he's, he's here mentally and in spirit, and we know what he's capable of. And he said something at the very end was, you know, this is just the business part of football, which I'm not getting into. Hmm. So do we have a player on the verge of holding out without having expected him to hold out in Christian McCaffrey, or is it premature in your mind? I mean, I hope not, because we've seen two players the last two years. Well, I guess Bosa was probably the closest thing to, to a holdout, though he was technically there before the beginning of the season. And then Debo, who said that the contract negotiations impacted his play, and he had a you know a poor 2022 season. I mean, I, I hope it doesn't turn into anything, but it sounds like there is something there, Steiny. And it sounds like Christian McCaffrey wants to get paid, and he wants more money because who's the best player on offense the last two years? I mean, I guess Brock Purdy, People, some would say, but others might tell you it's Christian McCaffrey who came in higher than Brock Purdy in last year's MVP voting. So if he's your most important player and he feels like he's underpaid, I mean, do fans feel like he has a right to hold out? Or appear to hold out? It On the surface, it's a joke. It's a joke that Ayuk and, and Debo Samuel make more money than Christian McCaffrey. I understand that that template works for a lot of teams that throw the ball a lot. But if I'm Christian McCaffrey, as Guru would say, you damn right I'm feeling some kind of way that those two guys are going to get almost twice as much money as me when I tote the rock more, I catch balls just like them, and I am the piece that everybody revolves around. He's what? He's got two more years left on his deal, but the guarantees from this point on are um, are done. So. Brian Baldinger had this to say with the uh, with the morning guys the other day, and it's uh, it's a little sobering. Not only that, but he's seen every other great player on that team cash in. Yep. So I mean, what's he going to do? Like take a pay cut, take a haircut, not cash in? I mean, it started with Fred. Fred cashed in. Nick cashed in in the last minute last year. Debo cat. I mean, Juice cashed in for a second time. Yeah. So like. What you know? He's just looking at it going. Okay, um, we, we've got a team of great stars, um, and I'm one of those players. Uh, you can rank him any way you want, and you could say anything you want about the running back market. He was the MVP of the team, so why wouldn't he try to cash in while he can right now? That's Brian Balding on with uh, the morning roast on on Wednesday. He should. He should try to cash in. I mean, okay, so whether it's a big deal about him holding out or not, he's not there. The reason why he's not there, I believe, is because he wants to be paid. Right. Or he wants to be compensated for what he's done. For example, I know they're a little different in position. George Kittle makes $16 million a year. Or about. Maybe he's like 15. That's about what Christian McCaffrey makes. Christian McCaffrey, in terms of scrimmage yards doubled, essentially, what George Kittle did last year. Now, for those that might say, well, George Kittle blocks. So does McCaffrey. When he's not catching the ball, when he's not running the ball, he's always on the field. Christian McCaffrey is the most important offensive player 
on the San Francisco 49ers not named Brock Purdy. And on some days, he might be more important than Brock Purdy. So, yeah, I want to see McCaffrey get paid. And if this is what he has to do to do it, to get it, I support him 100%. See, this is the problem, and this is the kerfuffle that you get with Brock Purdy at quarterback. Oh, boy. You want to start a seventh-round pick, making less than a million, and everybody on that team knows he's getting paid in a year. These players are on a feeding frenzy. They, they need to get paid before Purdy because they're not going to have any money when they pay Purdy. Maybe that's what McCaffrey's thinking. I think he's also looking at where he's at in his career and saying, I'm 28. And that's yeah. about when running backs stop getting paid. So I kind of, I, I think Baldy's right. He does need to cash in and out. And now, and I, I don't think it's just because of the players that are around him or the contracts that might be coming, but, you know, he's, he's probably looking at where his athletic career is headed. And he's a smart guy. He understands who's going to get paid and who's not. Even if he's, extremely productive this year. The 49ers could just say, okay, we got you under contract through 2025, and then we'll figure out, and we'll, 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 we'll basically go from there. And they could even franchise tag him after that. So Christian McCaffrey wants to get paid like a top-tier weapon, and we're discussing you know, Justin Jefferson and CeeDee Lamb and all these 30-plus million dollar wide receivers. I don't think Christian McCaffrey should make $30 million as a running back, but to be essentially a middle of the pa- be paid like a middle of the pack receiver he- he's probably wondering why like I- i'm the outlier i'm the exception the exception to the rule of not wanting to pay running backs because i've been your mvp since i stepped in the room yeah and i mean we, we should be clear mccaffrey's not holding out right now no. he's just not at a voluntary workout but everybody seems to be talking about mccaffrey's money and how he may be seeing people cash in and he may think this is his opportunity. I mean, there's nothing stopping the San Francisco 49ers from doing what the Oakland Raiders or the Las Vegas Raiders just did, which is they just gave Max Crosby a raise because he's been that good. It's out of nowhere. They gave him a raise without adding any more years to his deal. So it happens. Um, 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, yeah, Christian McCaffrey, not in voluntary workouts. Is, it, is that a big deal to 49er fans? I mean, I don't know if it is or not. I just know that the last few guys we've seen hold out got off to slow starts. Uh, RJ's in uh, RJ's in Berkeley. What's going on, RJ? How you doing, man? I'm doing well. A little foggy here today, but uh, we're looking for some sun. Looking for some sun peeking through at some point. All right. Hey, my question, my comment on the whole McCaffrey thing is that I think he should fire the guy who uh, signed that contract he's on if he's got a complaint. <laughs> you know, yeah, he maybe he's underpaid, but I guess he wasn't when he signed. So that's always on the table, isn't it? Yeah, but uh, yeah, exactly. But in, in the NFL, you can do this and you can't really do it in the other sports. And the reason is because the other sports are guaranteed. You got a guaranteed contract. They're not guaranteed in the NFL. So Christian McCaffrey needs to protect himself a little bit right now. Well, that, that's the other part of his contract, too, that I think it's left off the radar, which is he has no more guaranteed money left. Like right. He's already been paid his full guaranteed salary. So everything beyond this is non-guaranteed. So he does have to protect himself. Yeah. And I think the Niners owe it to him to protect him or to compensate him, especially when they're trying to prioritize the rest of these guys. And maybe, maybe you're right, Stein. It is because of Purdy that they're second-guessing Ayuk or second-guessing restructuring McCaffrey, who, by the way, I know we talk about restructuring a lot to save money, but as we saw earlier today with Max Crosby, you can restructure to give a player more money right. to move in the positive direction. So, yeah, like, I want to see the 49ers pay Christian McCaffrey. That's, yeah, and, that's what he deserves. Yeah, when I was ta- listen, when I was talking about Purdy earlier, I was just kind of kidding around that he's messed everything up. But the reality is, is they're, they're going to have to pay Brock Purdy uh, at the end of the season. And yes, that's going to impact their salary structure and it's going to trickle down into, into everybody. 
Um, you know, the one thing I, I always find is, is kind of interesting is when we talk about players and how, um, I don't want to say manipulative, but how powerful they can be. Everybody, everybody talks about LeBron James and how he runs the, he runs the teams that, uh, that he's on or the GM. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, people say that Steph Curry's got a lot of say so, uh, in terms of what the Warriors do, you know. When I think of Christian McCaffrey, he's not the kind of guy I thought uh, he might hold out. You know what I mean? I just he's a pretty quiet guy. He just goes about his business. He's maybe the best running back in football and I don't know why this has caught me a little bit by surprise, but I guess it shouldn't have because it's the nature of professional sports. Well, it, it's not just him Nobody being Nobody saw this coming, right? It's not just him being the best running back in football. Like hit his contract or his salary is at a specific place because of the position that he plays. Right. But if you take a look at McCaffrey in reference to the rest of the league, the only people that are in his conversation in terms of value are largely quarterbacks. Tyreek Hill's up there. You know, maybe Miles Garrett as a defensive player coming off the season that he had. Um, Nick Bosa a year prior might have been in that conversation. But you know, you're th- when you think about the most valuable offensive players in the league, you think of quarterbacks. Christian right. McCaffrey and Tyreek Hill are the only two that immediately come to my mind outside of QBs. And he has paid nearly half of what Tyreek Hill makes in a season. I think that's a big reason why he's saying, dude, I, I mean, I- I'll give you all I got. It's right. not as if I'm going to show up and be a bum right. and be out of shape. I'm working out. I want to be a big reason why the Niners can win a Super Bowl this year. But can you break me off something? Like, can you can you give me a little bit? Just a nibble? Yeah. I'm, it, it sounds like the people who are um, kind of around the team, they're sending off signals that this may be about money. And I guess Michael Silver of the San Francisco Chronicle uh, tweeted out something about the Raiders – um, given Max Crosby a, a six million dollar raise, and Silver's suggesting, you know, that's what the 49ers are going to have to do, or that's what they should do, or that's what uh, that's what McCaffrey's looking at. But um, it's voluntary; he's not there. But it feels like where there's a little smoke, there's some fire. And how big of a deal do you think it is, 49er fans, that McCaffrey's not there? You know, what's funny is I, I'm not sure how big of a deal it is. Yet until we hear why he's not why he's not there. But eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. Where is Christian McCaffrey? And the fact that he's not at um OTAs, does that kind of scare you as a 49er fan, knowing what happened the last couple times that guys held out?